So in this short video, we're going to talk about and illustrate how you can install a phase runner motor controller on a BBS HD mid-drive e-bike. So I've got here a tandem bicycle that's running the BBS HD mid-drive with its internal motor controller, and we're going to be removing that motor controller and substituting it with the phase runner, an external controller. Now there's three primary reasons why people like to do this upgrade. The first and most common is for people who want to run at a higher voltage. The built-in motor controller from the BBS HD is limited to 52 volt maximum battery packs. The phase runner, on the other hand, will let you run up to 72 or 74 volts. And it can do this safely because the phase runner actively controls and limits the phase current into the motor, so you're not risking overheating or burning up the motor in spite of the higher voltage. The phase runner also allows for much smoother control of the motor. Because it's running a torque-based throttle, and the last thing is that running an external controller like this gives you a lot more customization and configurability potential. When you use the built-in motor controller, you're limited to the parameters and options that Bafang has provided in their controller tuning, whereas an external controller like the Phase Runner has many more features that you could take advantage of. So we're gonna go over the list of components that's needed for the retrofit. Now the first is the Phase Runner with the BBS HD cable option. So it's our standard Phase Runner that's connectorized on the back, but the cables that come with the BBS HD model are already terminated to match the connections that are inside the BBS HD motor housing. So from the phase runner to the motor here. And we also include a separate cable that links the motor controller pass sensor and temperature sensor up to a version three cycle analyst. So most of the people doing a BBS HD phase runner retrofit are also gonna be using a version three cycle analyst as a display and control device for their system. It's possible to run it without the version 3 cycle analyst, but you miss out on a lot of the features and capabilities that are otherwise available. So our systems don't use the same high-go connectors that are on the BBS system. So if you want to have a throttle control or e-brake cutoffs or, or a shift sensor cutoff, you'll also need to get those terminated to match the connectors that are on the version 3 cycle analyst. For most people, the easiest thing to do is to just purchase a new throttle, new brake cutoffs, and a shift sensor if you have one that are already terminated with our JST plugs. If you're electronically inclined, you can also re-terminate the existing controls on your handlebars with them. It's also a handy idea to have one of the auxiliary inputs for the cycle analyst, and that lets you adjust the pedal assist or power levels on the fly while you're riding the bike. So the bike that we're working on here is a pretty fun conversion. This is a tandem bicycle that our uh, manufacturing supervisor, Chris, decided to take on as a project for him and his wife. And we've taken a BBS mid-drive, but instead of using just a regular crank on the right, we put a crank with a chain ring, and that lets us couple the motor drive system to the stoker drive on the back. So we have a fully functional tandem bicycle. Either rider can pedal, and that pedal force goes to the, to the wheel or the motor can drive and both riders can freewheel if they want to as well. So a tandem bike is a good usage case for running a powerful mid-drive like the BBS uh, because you're having a much heavier weight set up than a single person bicycle obviously. So we're not going to detail the mechanical installation of the BBS HD but we are going to now modify this to remove the internal motor controller. So Chris if you could come over and uh, remove the cover plate. So generally speaking, this would be easier to do before you've installed the drive system on the bike, but there's just enough room to do it even with it already on the bottom bracket as it is. Um, so first we're removing the three uh, hex bolts that hold the motor controller cap on. Okay. So normally there's a bit of a seal to break when you take this uh, motor controller off because of the gasket. Um, and so now we're going to need to try to film right in there. Um, if we look in here, so now we have the three phase connections uh, between the motor controller and the motor. Uh, we also have this four connector plug here. This four pin plug is the pedal assist sensor, the pass sensor that we're going to be hooking up to the cycle analyst. And there's also a six connector plug uh, buried inside here. So I don't know if you can focus in there. Perfect. Um, so this white six conductor plug, now to pull these off, they're gonna be covered in silicone and that makes it a little bit tug to pull and you might need to, to chew the silicone up with a, a knife or a screwdriver before. Um, so this contains the five hall sensors and it also contains the temperature sensor which will be going up to the cycle analyst temperature sensor input as well. So now the internal product controller is physically removed and we just need to unplug all the connections that are linking it to the motor and we can toss this into the bin. So now we're going to plug in the cable harness that comes with the phase runner here. So it's easiest if you first plug in the six pin white connector. Um, so that you'll see down here and there is a polarity to it. Uh, so it'll only go in one way, not the other orientation. And with that seated, we can now install each of the phase wires. So the yellow phase, the blue phase, and the green phase. 
So the next cable that we want to hook up is the one that brings out this temperature sensor and the pedal assist sensor. So here um, we've got a four pin plug that matches with the four pin uh, JST pass plug that's built in here. So plug those two guys together. And we have the two pin JST plug, which is our temperature sensor. And that's brought out of the uh, six pin connector here. So that's it for connectorizing inside here. Now what we have is this kind of ugly mess of wires and ideally we would cover this back up. Now we could try to mount the original cover on here, but it sucks because it has a motor controller in it that doesn't leave any room for all these cables. So now we're gonna go fetch that back out of the garbage bin. Now that we salvage this from the dumpster bin, we're gonna try to gouge away all the internal motor controller and use it just as a casing cover plate in order to cover up the set of connections in there. Mm, nice. So actually, if you just tug on it from the cable end, um, the potting compound seems to come off pretty easily. Perfect. So there we go. It's a quick and easy way to remove a motor controller. <laughs> um, this grommet's kind of nice, so I'm actually going to snip this wire off so that we'll still have the grommet available for us to tuck our wires through. So that actually came out a lot more cleanly than I thought. As soon as we were able to get underneath the bottom of this and pry it up, the entire heat sink casting for the MOSFETs just allowed the whole thing to slide out of the casting, and there were no fasteners actually holding the motor controller inside there. So you just get any kind of crowing crowbar mechanism to lift it up, and you'll be able to lift the controller out, and then expose a nice clean shell that will then cap off this set of connections and reseal the motor. So now we can feed the cable outputs through the slot that's in that shell piece, and then put this back on here. Um, carefully realign the rubber grommet so that we maintain the original waterproof seal. And then, Chris, you can start putting those screws back in. Got the grommet all the way down. So the next step is to find the location where we're going to mount the motor controller on the bike. So on a typical diamond frame bicycle, usually you'd route the uh, cable coming out of the BBSHD up the seat tube, and then you'd be able to fit the phase runner either on the down tube or underneath the top tube of the bicycle. Uh, this is a slightly more unusual system with the tandem bike and we have a tandem install with the battery on the back so it kind of makes sense for us to locate the phase runner further towards the stern or rear side of the bicycle uh, and i think a nice spot for the phase runner is going to be tucked between these tubes right here um, and that gets us in closer proximity to the battery pack but it should still give enough cable lengths for the cycle analyst run up to the handlebars so we can now plug in the phase wires plug in the hall wires and the motor controller itself attaches really neatly with just a pair of cable ties so we're going to locate it right here so next up we're going to fit the cycle analyst on the handlebars um, this handlebar has a nice small diameter stem so we can take the mounting bracket on the bottom rotate it 90 degrees and then clamp it on nice and centered to the stem and leave all that real estate free Okay, and now we have two cables that are going to link, uh, or several cables to link up to the cycle analyst. So the six pin plug needs to go all the way down to the phase runner motor controller. And then coming out of the BBS HD, we have this harness that includes the five pin pass plug and the two pin temperature sensor. So as much as possible, we like to have the electrical cables follow existing cables that are on the bike for the brakes and derailers. So here we have the rear derailleur cable following along the down tube, and that will be a nice path for running the cable of the cycle analyst over to the phase runner controller here. So the so trick as always is to use spiral wrap in order to cluster together the electrical wires with the mechanical housing. And then you get the clean lines of a single uh, cable run and it avoids having a whole bunch of loops of zip ties going around the frame itself So here you can see I'm merging together the pedal assist sensor and the CA cable Coming from the back of the bike along with the cable housing going to the rear derailleur And then combining that into one single cable cluster that we have running under the down tube um, All of this cable mess up near the handlebar We're gonna have clean lines coming down from the brake housings here And all of this is gonna get bundled up inside a velcro sleeve and that'll make the whole front end of the bike look pretty clean as well in spite of having so many uh, Connectors and accessories all plugged in here What are you doing Chris? So I'm just tightening up the cables at the back for the power system So from the battery all the way into the face runner 
we've got this big cable over here and it fits just nicely into the battery. So as supplied, if the Phasener was purchased from us with the BBS HD cable harness, we would be preloading it with all the setup parameters configured for the BBS HD motor. So you don't need to tune or change the setting in the Phasener to have it work unless you want to do some of the more advanced tweaking. But if you got your Phasener independently of getting a kit with the BBS HD motor harness, then you're going to need to set the parameters up to match what's inside the BBS HD motor. The BBS HD motor has 88 effective pole pairs for the number of commutations per crank revolution, and it has an RPM per volt of about 3.4. So you want to preset those values in. You can then launch the auto-tune. The static auto-tune will measure the inductance and resistance of the motor, and the dynamic auto-tune would then get the spinning auto-tune. You could also preload sensible values just by going to File, Import from XML, and then select the BBS HD defaults file that comes in the installation directory. Um, so the next item that might need some setup is the cycle analyst. So there's two things in the cycle analyst that aren't going to be by default configured to match what's on the BBS, and that's the pass sensor and the temperature sensor. So in the setup menu, we're going to navigate over to the pass setups, basic pass device, and here we want to check that the P and the D arrows both toggle when I rotate the cranks. So I'm going to slowly turn the pedals. You see how they go up, down, up, down, up, down. That confirms that we've connected and wired things up properly and that the pass is operating. So now we're going to enter the setup menu and go from a disabled pass sensor into a basic pass. The BBS HD does not have torque sensing, it's just a basic pass. And it's a 24 pole sensor. So if we were to count how many times that went up and down while I turned the cranks, it was a full 24 alternations for each full revolution. Um, and it is a two wire signal. You saw both the P and the D arrows were toggling. Uh, the direction polarity, the default of 5 volts equals reverse, is correct for the BBS HD standard. And now you see we're configured for a basic pass control, uh, basic pass device. And on the next screen here is where we set up how we're controlling the bike based on that pass sensor. Typically, you'd want to have assistance whenever you're pedaling. We're going to set this up to give power assistance. And the power level at maximum assist will run this one. Uh, let's maybe do 800 watts. Uh, the exact amount here is a matter of personal preference. Uh, all the defaults are perfectly fine to start off with. And the next thing we're going to set up is a temperature sensor. So if we've plugged in the cables correctly at room temperature, you should see somewhere between 3 to 3.5 three volts coming off of that thermistor. That way we know that it's hooked up right. If the sensor was unplugged, we would see 4.99 volts there, and we wouldn't be able to get a valid temperature reading out of it. So instead of a disabled temperature sensor, we can now safely say this is a 10K thermistor. Um, the threshold temperatures for when the cyclonics will roll back power from the motor overheating, the default values from 90 to 130 are fine. You can push the motor to hotter temperatures if you want to, but this is a nice conservative value that will always keep you in a very safe operating zone for the motor stator. Okay, and the last thing that we want to set up here is the digital locks control. Um, so I, on this bicycle, we installed the digital up-down push buttons for setting the amount of assistance that we're getting while we're riding. So we're going to enable Digiox, and this is a two-button control. And the function, we're going to set this to our pedal assist level. So that will be pass level. Um, now I set this to go up to 800 watts of maximum power. In order to have nice clean intervals of 100 watts each, I'm going to set myself to nine steps from zero to maximum power. And those nine steps will each be increments of 100 watts. So now when I push this button, we'll see us go from one to nine being zero to 99% uh, assist. Um, and what's nice about the phase runner motor controller is that the calibration uh, by default is correct at one milliohm, um, but it's always good to zero the amps. If you see you know, five or six watts on the screen, even though you're not using any power, if you run the zero amps routine, that will set that to be the new zero amps reference. And now if we look at our basic display here, uh, we can see zero watts because I just ran the offset. And this is going to alternate between distance, amp hours, and temperature. And so we see the motor temperature is 27 degrees, which seems sensible and correct. So now if I switch to the third display screen, if I rotate the pedals here, on this display screen here, I can see the human pedal cadence. I want to confirm when I spin those pedal forwards that I see an RPM. And you see there, 30 RPM, 40 RPM, 50 RPM. So now we know that the cadence sensor is working fine. And then we know that the pedal assist is going to work fine. 
Everything here is set up. We can rip off our protective overlay on the cyclonalis and now go for a spin. And we're off.